Hello, and it's a warm welcome here from Rerun Productions at the Oak Tree Arena. Well, I've got this trophy in my hand, which can mean only one thing. It is the second leg of the Premier League playoff final here tonight. Somerset Rebels against Edinburgh Monarchs. 50, 45 points to 43 on Friday up at Edinburgh. So the Monarchs come in with a two-point lead before tonight's meeting. Can Somerset overcome that heartbreak again from last year where they narrowly missed out on being champions? We'll have to wait and see. Now, Somerset is tracking a strong side once again, but sadly, Edinburgh are without Joseph Tobacco after that unfortunate crash on Friday. So they operate rider replacement for him. So now we'll pop into the pits, we'll grab a couple of riders before the meeting and hear their thoughts before the racing. So with Craig Cook now, the Edinburgh um, team captain, so we were just speaking to Carl Newman, it's only two points for you guys to bring down here tonight, do you think it's going to be enough for you? Uh, no, I'd li definitely like it to be more, but um, you know, we don't know whether it's going to be enough or not, you know, we're going to have to see how it all pans out, you know, if, um, we've obviously won here this season and we've also took a heavy defeat as, as well, so... Um, yeah, it, hopefully we'll, we'll get it on tonight and the track's a bit in, indifferent than what it usually is. Um, so hopefully that'll uh, play its part and um, play, out, play in our favour. So um, it's obviously a little bit, it's going to be a little bit slick with it raining, um, <laughs> raining heavily uh, during the day. So um, the, the guys have left it, left it pretty hard out there. So hopefully that'll play, play in our favour and um, hopefully come out with a win. And obviously you're missing um, Joseph Tobacco as well tonight, so you're using rider replacement for him. Do you think that's going to weaken you at all? Yeah, obviously you know, Joe's going to be a big miss, but um, yeah, Klaus, Klaus has picked up his form these last couple of, couple of meetings. And um, yeah, obviously Klaus can get have a ride and so can Max and, uh, and Derek, Derek is likely to have a couple. So yeah, we all know, uh, hopefully um, you know they can they can fill in his boots and uh, do, do his job for him. but. You know, obviously, uh, we'd like to come here with a seven-man team, but you know, it isn't isn't to be. So we're going to try and make best of what we've got tonight. And we, all the fans, always enjoy it when you come down as well. You against Jason Doyle. You only dropped one point on Friday, and that was to Doyle himself um, up at Edinburgh. So how do you think you're going to get on against him today? Who's going to come out on top? Oh, you know, I think uh, you know, it's, it's always 50-50 on me and Doyle, Doyle go against each other. So. Um, you know, I think that the results if you had, if you had up the heats that we won get won get won and lost against each other they're all yeah, um, it's probably about even. So um, yeah, I don't mind wrestling Dolly. You know, he's he's a, he's a good guy and um, you know he's always puts up a good fight. You know, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it and uh, hopefully it'll be me that come out on top. And you've had another fantastic season as well this year. And we were just talking off camera and um, came third in the Elite League Riders Championship on Saturday. How was that? Yeah, obviously it was a uh, it was a good meeting, and um, you know the the racing wasn't wasn't entirely great, but um, you know I made I made do the uh, best job. You know, there's guys that weren't committed. Um, you know, I, I really committed myself, and and you know and, and took it as an opportunity. Um, when other guys wouldn't wouldn't race hard, you know, I I, I got the grip between my teeth, and um, I went out and, and, and gave it my all. Um, you know, going into the final heat, you know, I really thought I could have won the meeting, and. Uh, just un unfortunately, um, I was off gate two, hands were off gate one, and he, he ran me and Neil's up a little bit wide, and Schlein just potted around the inside and, and uh, took it away from us. But yeah, that's uh, that's just the way it goes, and you know, their meetings are, are all, always, uh, you know, anyone could win them. So yeah, to finish third is uh, definitely an achievement and something I can put on my resume. Well, fingers crossed you'll have a bit more to put on as well after tonight. No, thank you. Good Cheers, thanks. So Jason Doyle now, we've just spoken Craig, to Craig Cook, Edinburgh captain. He doesn't think that two points are enough for his team tonight. What's your take on the meeting? Yeah, I guess that's what Cookie thinks. Put it on a low key and um, hopefully they can steal it from us. But we all know it's going to be a hard meet and they've done us before this year and it's not going to be hard. And did you think that two points was enough? Obviously, you only had two points on Friday, but it was those two points that went amiss rather than you coming out on day when. Yeah, I think it was a lot biased from the Scottish ref we had up there. There was a few points what should have been our way and, and it never happened. And we knew that was going to be against us tonight uh, on last Friday. So it's a different ball game tonight and I know they're going to be up for it. And again, the fans always love Craig Cook coming down to race against you. Two top guys in the Premier League. He thinks you're pretty even, but he'd obviously like to come out on top against you tonight. What are your take? Yeah, it's, that's, he's been riding awesome this year and last year. And, uh, and yeah, it's every time Cookie comes down here, I know it's going to be a hard meeting. You spoiled his maximum on Friday. Do you reckon you might return the favour tonight? We'll see. <laughs>
Yeah. Good luck for this Thank evening. You. Gary May now. Well, two points against Edinburgh from Friday's meeting. As you were just saying, they're a very strong side, so you don't know what's going to happen. But what is your gut telling you tonight? Well, we just go out and don't get any last places and just did what we did at Edinburgh on Friday. Just if we're in a scoring position, we stay there and then we just get them further and further down and then we bang them at the end. And how do you bring your team together on a night like this? Do, you, do they prepare any differently? Because it is another meeting, but obviously there's so much rising on it as well. No, they, this team wants to win, so I haven't got too much to do, but they know what to do anyway. Like we, when we was at Edinburgh, you know, just scoring points all the time, that was it. And obviously you can't say came so close last year, don't want to let it slip away again tonight. That would just be heartbreaking, wouldn't it? Yeah, we're not going to do that. This team wants to win and they wanted to win all year and this is, uh, this is what they wanted. So when you put the team together at the very beginning of the year, did you expect them to have done as well as they have? Obviously Premier League peers, champions, uh, knockout cup champions, top of the Premier League table, top of your Premier League playoff group and now finally here again. Yeah, that's how they were built. It was built to win the pairs, it was built to win the fours, and then we take the league and this, this uh, the team was built. It was um, obviously the reserves we had to change because uh, we felt when we, when we was on the Northern Tour that the reserves weren't doing the job and that's when we went and got Charles Wright and he's been absolutely brilliant for us. So now obviously you're looking forward to next year and what can you tell us if anything about the team that you're thinking about? That it would be in the top six again. And that is it. Uh, we'll build another strong team for next year. And Around so anyone in particular? Can't say anything at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll find out soon, though, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Signed out uh, December because we've got to have all their Kevlers made. So they will find out then. All right. Well, fingers crossed for tonight, and I can't wait to hear the team. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you. Bye. So John Campbell now, so as we've been saying to everyone else that we've interviewed, there's only two points going into tonight's meeting. And obviously we know what Edinburgh are capable of around um, the Somerset track. The only teams who have beaten Somerset at home this year. Are you feeling pretty confident tonight? I'm not saying um, exceptionally confident. Uh, we've got a chance. It's very disappointing that Joseph isn't with us tonight because he's a good rider around this track. And uh, really it'll be a matter of how we can cope with rider replacement and how well we do there. Um, but we've got a chance because we've got a chance in every match. Well, obviously all the riders know the track pretty well now. This is the eighth time that you've ridden against Somerset. So you kind of we've got used to each other's way of riding. And obviously Clay's Vissin, an ex-Somerset rider as well. But what have the riders said to you about the track tonight? Obviously with the storm that we've had battering the southern coast. <laughs> they haven't said much to me about the track. They're just keen to get on with it and see if we can... See if we can hold on to our two-point lead, as simple as that. Um, it's always said the track's the same for everybody. That's not necessarily the case, of course, but uh, at this time of the year, you've just got to go, get on with it and do what you can on whatever the track throws at you. Did you expect to get a bigger lead as well from Friday night? Um, yes, I did, yes. Uh, we had, there were probably three, three critical factors that prevented us doing that. We lost a 5 one in heat number eight. Uh, particularly against Kyle Newman who'd done nothing up to that point in the match then Alex Davis won heat 12 when he'd done absolutely nothing in the match and then uh, of course Joseph had crashed out of the meeting before that and him missing in heat uh, 14 allowed another 5-1 to Somerset so those were the critical factors if, if they'd gone in our favour then we might have been 10, 10 or 12 points up and we just saw you walking in with the trophy how much would it mean to you and all the guys to obviously take that back up to Edinburgh with you? tried to give it to Somerset officials on Friday night but they wouldn't take it from me. <laughs> uh, um, Richard Hollingworth from Scunthorpe had come up all the way to Edinburgh on Friday night to deliver that trophy. So they forced me to bring it down. It's a bad omen apparently if you, if you touch the trophy before you win it. I don't believe in such things so I'll touch it any time, particularly at the end of this match. I'll be delighted if I can take it away again. Well, maybe that's why Somerset didn't want to take it on Friday then. <laughs> could be, yeah, could be. Well good luck for this evening. Thanks very much. Thank you. So as you can see there, the track staff working furiously on the track at the moment. Since we last spoke to you, we've had a really heavy downpour. So now we're all rather wet and rather cold before tonight's meeting. But the crowds are still flocking in. We've got a really good crowd here at the Oak Tree Arena tonight. So now all we've got left to do is just wait for the presentation of the riders. So unfortunately, we're not having a parade lap. But what we do want to see is 15 more pulsating heats, just as they were at Armadale on Friday. 72 hours later and this uh, will decide the Premier League champions for 2013. Edinburgh of course well they have had success in recent years as uh, league champions. They won I think three seasons ago they were the champions and they won it a couple of times before that as well. As uh, 
Somerset were there hoping to become Premier League champions for the first time in their history. Of course, they won the Knockout Cup in 2008 and they also won it this year, so they're going for that elusive double. Also, the Premier League pairs champions from this season. But uh, what a season it will cap off if they can win here by three points or more. A huge crowd has turned up here. Very, very poor conditions earlier on. We had a massive thunderstorm or a massive storm rather just before the start of the meeting but uh, the track staff well, they worked at miracles to get the racing circuit in uh, such good condition we're about to go with heat number one Jason Doyle, Carl Newman, Craig Cook, Max Frick the race is underway into that first bend and it is Newman from the inside who's pushed out Frick Cook is at the back that's a major surprise Doyle has come through in the second place the uh, Somerset fans from underneath us well they are going mad here because uh, the uh, case is Rebels they are on a 5-1 in the opening race and this would uh, cut out the deficit in the uh, very first race and would see uh, Somerset move into a two-point lead on Advert having just gone down by the two points of course 45 points of 43 at Armadale on Friday and uh, Craig Cook well he's pulled out of the race and he's gone back into the pits as uh, the riders go down the back straight it is Newman looking for his teammate Jason Doyle around the outside Max Frick is back in third difficult track conditions although the riders look as if they're doing a great job out in front especially if you're a Somerset supporter it is Carl Newman then who uh, leads the way Jason Doyle in second place young Aussie Frick is back in third one of the match winners for Edinburgh when they won here in the televised meeting uh, back in June as uh, Carl Newman takes the victory, second place goes to Jason Doyle, Frick in third, he'd made a good start but he was pushed aside by Newman, a terrific start by Carl, of course he is an elite league uh, champion this year with uh, Paul, he hopes to get to a personal double as well and he's got off to a great start and so has Jason, Max Frick in third, Craig Cook, top rider in the Premier League, no points in the opening race, the Somerset fans are going delirious at early days yet though but what a start we move on to heat number two Liam Carr comes out off gate number one Charles Wright comes out off gate number two Charles scored paid at nine at uh, Armadale on Friday great return for him Derek Sneddon comes out off gate number three so did he he's been in form of late since he's gone down to reserve berth as he said in his interview with Laura before the start of the meeting and from the outside, Oliver Greenwood coming in for Lewis Rose, who failed to score last night. Not quite over his injuries as yet, it seems. Heat number two is underway. And into that first bend where it is Carr, who's made a good start. The two Casey's Rebels riders get in each other's way. Charles Wright pushing out to Oliver Greenwood. Derek Snedden, though, unable to come through into third place. It is a shared heat in race number two, then. As uh, Liam Carr, it is who leads the way. He scored paid five. Did, uh, young Liam up at Armadale so he certainly did his job from the reserve berth in uh, Scotland and he's doing his uh, job here from the reserve berth in Somerset because he's leading the way, Wright is in second, Greenwood back in first, Sneddon is uh, at the back, riders visibility may be a problem here this evening although the, the, it's uh, looking pretty good for the riders at the moment, especially Liam Carreld in front he leads the way, Tracker holding up well to the deluge that it had an hour or so ago as uh, here comes Sneddon around the outside of Greenwood every point is going to be vital here this evening in this grand final second leg as Liam Carr he uh, takes the victory an excellent race win that was for him second place goes to Charles Wright him and uh, Oliver Greenwood got in each other's way but thankfully for them and the Somerset fans they were able to regroup and uh, keep uh, Edinburgh captain Derek Sneddon at bay it results in a shared heat so that's an excellent race win there for young Liam and on the night it is eight points to four and on aggregate Somerset still hold on to that two point lead 51 to 49 Riders out for heat number three just to let you know Graham Reeve but the very experienced uh, referee is in charge here tonight he's a cool head in meeting big meetings like that like this rather and Graham certainly has got to one of those and there's the two managers there John Campbell at the back Gary May just looking on as well and some of the big crowd here this evening heat number three we've got Alex Davis coming out off gate number one Klaus Vissing former Somerset Rebel he's off gate number two Nick Morris is off three 
Max Vick, ride replacement for the very unfortunate Joseph Tabaka. They will miss his input here tonight, Will Edinburgh. It was an awful crash in heat nine at Armadale that uh, unfortunately put Joseph out of, of the meeting. It's operating ride replacement, heat number three is underway. And into that first, Ben Davis from the inside has made a great start. He leads away from Visson in second place, Nick Morris. Pulls in a tear off in third. Max Frick who scored a point in his first ride. He's at the back in his uh, second one. Heat number three. Out in front then. It is uh, Alex Davis who's showing up well. Klaus Vissin in uh, second place. Nick Morris back in third. Frick is uh, still at the back. But it is Alex who uh, scored paid uh, five at uh, Armadale. Didn't do much in his first couple of rides. But then came good as John Campbell alluded to in his interview with Laura before the start of the meeting. It is Alex who leads the way. He really does score extremely well around his own circuit. He has done this season especially. He leads the way. And uh, well, Nick Morris there, he's uh, dispatched his goggles onto the centre green. Vision obviously is a problem when you are behind his use, but both of his tear-offs and now the goggles have come off as well. Klaus Vissin holds on to second place. Max Frick at the back. It's going to be another heat advantage for the home side as uh, Morris crosses the line in third, goggleless. Second place, so it goes to Vissin, but the win. Well, it goes to Alex Davis, plenty of support down the back straight as well. And uh, that's an excellent uh, opening ride for the young Aussie. It means that Somerset increased their lead by a couple more, 55 to 51 on aggregate, 12 points to six on the night. Riders out for heat number four. They're rushing through this meeting. No parade, of course. Just trying to get the meeting on the, the, the forecast is for no more rain, but we were told there was going to be no more rain when we arrived at 4.30 this afternoon. But to uh, say that heavy deluge certainly made track conditions difficult, but certainly raceable. Heat number four, the riders out on track. We've got uh, a change from Gary May. Charles Wright comes in to replace Oliver Greenwood. He's off gate number one. Derek Steddon off gate number two, gate number three. The first ride for Josh Gretchonik. He's got a big part to play here this evening. He did have an Armadale where he scored a, he scored 12 points from the outside. It is Theo Piper. Heat number four is underway. And it's that first member. Piper's made a great start from the outside. And he leads the way. It is the Flying uh, Dutchman then who uh, is held in front. Theo Piper leading it from Charles Wright in second. Josh Gretchonik. He's back in third with Sneddon. Well, unfortunately for Edinburgh, he's the captain of the Scott Waste Monarchs. He's at the back, but their number five is out in front. Two coach loads of Edinburgh fans have made the journey down here this evening to see if Edinburgh can add to the Premier League fours that they won in superb fashion at Peterborough earlier this season as uh, Theo Piper, well this is a bright start for him, he leads the way in his first ride, second place it is uh, Charles Wright, first spot it is Josh Mechonic with uh, Derek Sneddon once more, he's uh, at the back, but it's uh, looking like our second shared heat of the night, as uh, Theo, well he's going to come round and uh, take a victory here in uh, heat number four, excellent victory for him as well, coming out, coming off of uh, gate number four, that's the first rider to win off that difficult gate position in these conditions. He's won the race. Second place to right, third spot to Gretronic. Derek Sneddon at the back, 15-9, 58-54 on aggregate. We move on to heat number five. Max Frick, he comes out off gate number one, one point from his first two rides. Nick Morris comes out off gate number two, sec oh, third place in his first outing. Craig Kirk, who failed to score in his first ride. He has done that once or twice, we've noticed this year. He's had a bad first ride and then well, he's probably unbeaten after that. Let's see how he goes here in his second outing. And from the outside, it is Alex Davis who won his first outing. The rain, well, it's staying away at the main moment, thankfully. So they really are rushing through these races. We've not had a track grade so far. We're just going straight on through this uh, meeting. We can get the uh, full 15 races in, which uh, it certainly deserves such a prestigious uh, meeting, of course. It all culminates in this uh, 
next at few heats to decide the 2013 Premier League champions of course Somerset so unfortunate last year to go down by one point on Agri to Scunthorpe can they get to their revenge as heat number five gets underway and it is Cook off gate number three whose bike has pulled him to the front he leads the way and with Max Frick in second place the uh, the Edinburgh fans are delighted with this down the back straight because their side are on a 5-1 Alex Davis is in third Nick Morris is struggling in these conditions of course he's in last place Nick well he's won champions medals in each of the right each of the seasons that he's ridden for a side this in his UK career he won with Glasgow in 2010 he also has he won with Swindon last year, of course, also with Scunthorpe. We got the double, and he really is a bit of a talisman for his clubs, but he's at the back in this one as Alex Davis is chasing down Max Frick. Here he comes on the inside, but Frick's riding a good line. Craig Cook is going to do what he does best, and that is win races as he takes the victory in heat number five. Second place goes to Max Frick, third spot to Alex Davis. Nick Morris finishes in last place and it's all gone a bit quiet here at the Oak Tree Arena because that means there's now only two points between the sides on the night and that levels things up on aggregate at 59 points apiece. Didn't think it would be too long before Cookie got into his stride and he's certainly done that off at gate number three and uh, that's uh, the uh, first winner from that gate position so far. Super stuff from Cookie. Riders coming out for heat number six then. And Jason Doyle is the rider coming out of gate number one in this one. Paid winning his first ride off gate number two. Theo Piper, he got an excellent win in his first outing off that difficult gate number four position. Gate number three, that's his Cole Newman. He got a victory in heat number one. Super win that was for Cole. Really coming to the plate in his opening ride. And Liam Carr, he comes out off gate number four. And of course he won his first ride as well so a high quality heat number six this one as uh, we're about ready to go racing the scores level on aggregate up by the tape but it was a bit of a jumpy start there by jason doyle and immediately the red lights are on and jason was very fortunate there not to touch the tapes all four back for the restart well jason maybe a few nerves kicking in as uh, Craig Cook and uh, Klaus Missing look on. Jason, well, he uh, did touch the tapes uh, in the uh, opening race of the uh, grand final down at Paul in the first leg. We remember he was riding, the, riding at number two. Nerves kicking in on that occasion as uh, Paul, where well, they soundly beat Birmingham in that leg and also won the away leg as well, of course. Let's see what Doyle can do. Second time around this time is Carl Newman, who's lucky not to go through the tapes. Always oh, a few twitchy clutch hands, hands now as Jason Doyle leads the way from in second place to Scott Waste Monarchs riders. It is Theo Piper and Liam Carr. Here comes Newman on the inside, having made a mess of the start. Graham Reeve will he let the race go because Carl did not take an advantage, did not make an advantage from his start. He's, he, he's coming round on the inside now though of Liam Carr. Can Carr answer him back on the outside? Not at the moment. Every point will be by to where you feel this evening as Carl has got through in the third place after that dreadful start. Jason Doyle it is who leads the way. Such a superb rider he has been this year. Him and Craig Cook have been head and shoulders above the other riders in the Premier League this year. As Jason Doyle, well he leads the way from Theo Piper in second place, Carl Newman in third with uh, Liam Carr, well, he's uh, at the back, it's a 4-2 for the home side then, as uh, Jason, well he takes the victory from uh, Theo Piper in second place, uh, Carl Newman, very fortunate not to uh, go through into the tapes, but then he fought very hard to find a way past Liam Carr, tenacious battle there with uh, Liam, Carl getting the better of him, Jason taking the win though, a 4-2 for the home side, four points up on the night, back to two points up on Aggregates. So the riders out for heat number seven, and uh, Klaus Missing, he comes out off gate number one, solid second place in his first ride, behind Alex Davis, Josh Gretronic comes out off gate number two, paid second in his first outing, 
gate number three, that sees uh, Derek Sneddon. He uh, takes a ride replacement out in. We got to the local TV crew here this evening as well, looking on. And uh, so are plenty of the Somerset fans in front of the Kramer, Kramer corner there. Of course, uh, sadly no longer with us, Emil, but uh, never forgotten. Off gate number four, it is uh, Oliver Greenwood coming in for Charles Wright. And it is Grachonic who leads the way. Wright is at the back. It is missing in second place. Derek Sneddon could be scoring his first points of the meeting. He's back in third as the riders come round to complete the opening lap. Then it is Grachonic who leads the way. Though we did say that uh, Cook and uh, Doyle are head and shoulders above the rest of the riders in the Premier League, but they're not that far ahead of Josh, of course, who has had a fantastic season, absolutely superb year, not only with uh, Somerset who he hopes to win us a Premier League title with, but also with Paul, of course, with whom he did pick up an Elite League title, so he's going for his own personal double here this evening. He's going for victory here in heat number seven, and he leads the way from in second place. Klaus missing third spot is Derek Sneddon. Charles, oh, sorry, Oliver Greenwood at the back, unable to find a way past Derek. But Josh it is who looks like he's going to keep the Casey's Rebels a couple of points in front on aggregate he wins the race second place goes to uh, Klaus Smith in third spot to Derek Sneddon will really be pleased to at least got a point with the uh, Edinburgh Scott Waste Monarchs captain with uh, Oliver Greenwood finishing at the back uh, 23 points to 19 on the night 66 points to 64 on aggregate very very tight seven races gone we're pro to halfway stage of this second leg Josh coming round on a lap of honour and a wheelie to celebrate. Just really quickly, what's the track like? Just seeing you talking to Nick. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit different, so you know we just got to crack on with it, I suppose. But um, yeah, I think it's not the best for the fans, but you know we're here to do a job and we want to win the league, so we're doing everything that we can to uh, to do that. They're pushing hard, but you're four points ahead on aggregate at the moment. Yeah, definitely, it's going to be all the way to the end, I think. So. You know, we can't just get a, get to heat 12 or 10 or whatever and call it. They're going to want to go for it because they've got just as good a chance as we do. So, um, yeah, we just got to set up set up for the start and get all the boys going, I suppose. Well, good luck for the rest of the meeting. Cheers, thank you. Riders out for heat number eight, Derek Sneddon. He comes out for his second race in a row. He's off gate number one. Charles Wright comes out off gate number two, taking the place of Oliver Greenwood. So Gary May switching the two reserves around. In the last two races, gate number three sees Max Frick, who got a paid win in his last ride with Craig Cooker from the outside. It is Carl Newman has been impressive. Heat number eight. Up fly the tapes, bit of movement there by Charles Wright. Look, Graham Reavers let the race go, and Carl Newman has made a great start off a of four. He's come across to lead the way. In second place, it is Sneddon starting to get to, to grips with this track conditions now. He's in second place in third spot. It is Charles Wright and Max Frick is at the back who would have been hoping for some points in this one. He's put in a challenge on Wrighty but Charles who has come in and made such an impact to the reserve berth for the Casey's Rebels. It really was a gamble by the Somerset promotional team and management team of Debbie Hancock and Gary May but it seems to have played dividends. It certainly has at the moment because they are in the Premier League Grand Final and they are leading by four points on aggregate or sorry by two points on aggregate it could be four after this one as Charles Wright well he's in the mix there he's the meat in the Edinburgh sandwich held in front it is Cole Newman who's going to win his second race in his opening three rides a superb victory this is going to be for Cole he wins it and he's raised his arm aloft that was a big big win for him second place Goes to Sneddon, third spot to Charles Wright, who had to hold off the attentions of uh, Max Frick throughout that race. A 4-2 uh, for the Casey's Rebels then. And uh, that sees them move uh, into a uh, six-point lead on the night. And four points up on aggregate, 70 points to 66. Super stuff there from Carl and Charles. We move on to heat number nine. It really is getting very tense in the terraces. I'm sure it is out on track as well. Theo Piper comes out off gate number one. Five points from his first two rides. Alex Davis off two. A win in a third for him. Gate number three sees Liam Carr. 
he had a win in his first ride from the outside. It is Nick Marsh who struggled so far. Oh, and Nick made a bit of a bit of a big start there, and when the referee has let it go, as uh, Nick Morris, uh, it looked like he uh, anticipated the start, but Graham Reeves saw nothing untoward with it, and it is Nick who's held in front, making that massive start off at gate number four. He leads the way. Theo Piper in second place comes Theo. He won his first ride off gate number four, and Nick Morris is doing the same here in uh, heat number nine. In uh, third spot, it is uh, Alex Davis with Liam Carr at the back. It's a 4-2 for the home side, and this could increase their lead to uh, six points on the night. As uh, Nick Morris, we suddenly coming to the party, just one point from his first two rides. He's been desperately disappointed with that. Alex Davis, when he's closing in on Theo Piper, here he comes on the inside of Piper. Can, can, can he find a way past? He can indeed. And that certainly called out the Edinburgh number five as Alex has come through in the second place. We haven't had too much passing here this evening. Track, track conditions are difficult, but Alex Davis has got through in the second place. And, uh, well, did he catch Thite Piper napping somewhat there? That was quite brilliant racing there by Alex to come through. The, uh, Edim, the uh, Somerset fans absolutely delighted with that. A brilliant move on the inside by Alex uh, to uh, squeeze through past Theo and he gets up in the second place to join his teammate for a big big 5-1 32-22 on the night 75-67 on aggregate and the uh, Somerset fans just to our right absolutely ecstatic, ecstatic after that but of course Edinburgh they could bring out the tactical ride we move on to heat at number 10 and uh, well they've uh, decided not to uh, do it in this one Although uh, Klaus Vissing and Derek Snedding, they represent Edinburgh in this race. A panoramic view there of the setting here at the Oak Tree Arena. The, two, the year 2000 was when it all started here. And it's been uh, 13 seasons. They have had some success, of course. They had success in the Conference League in the early years. But uh, since they moved up to the Premier League, they have never won the Premier League title. Will that change here this evening? They have an eight-point lead on aggregate. And uh, John Campbell, well, he has resisted the temptation to uh, bring out the black and white helmet in this one. Craig Cook is out in heat number 11. He's obviously saved it for then. But will it be too late? Because could Vissing and Snedden get a heat advantage in this one? It's unlikely with Jason Doyle and Carl Newman in the race. That's what Jan John Campbell, I think, is expecting not to get a heat advantage. But you never know in Speedway, of course. Heat number 10, the lineup. It sees uh, Derek Snedden off gate number one. Shell splattered as you can see. Gate number two, Carl Newman. Gate three, Klaus Vissing from the outside. Jason Doyle. Doyle it is. Off gate number four. He's made a brilliant start. And uh, he leads the way. The uh, Somerset number one and captain leading by example. Carl Newman. Well, he's riding a brilliant race. He's in second place. The two Scott Waste Monarchs are chasing him down. Here comes the rider in uh, yellow. That is Derek Snedden around the outside of Carl. And he's got through in a second place. Brilliant action in heat number ten. As Jason Doyle, well, he's missing all of this. He's held in front. But Snedden, well, he really was a very brave move by him to come around the outside of Carl Newman to move through into second place. And now Klaus missing. Well, he's putting Carl under some pressure coming around the outside. Carl doesn't quite seem to have the speed in this one as he has had in his earlier races. He's trying desperately to hold on to that third place. Pulls it a tear off. Doyle is away and gone. All eyes are on the battle for third place. Derek Snedden holding on to that second spot. Here comes Vissing, a hard charge on the inside of Newman, who's come down. And uh, Carl, well, obviously, he will, he's not pleased with that, nor are the Somerset fans. As uh, Graham Reeve with his first big decision to make here this evening. As uh, Klaus Vissing, when well, he's come through, and it were well, to me, it certainly looks as if uh, he has knocked it off uh, Carl Newman there. Difficult position, though, for the referee from his view. And uh, what will the decision be? A crucial moment in this match. And uh, in fact, the race, well, it has been a wall, uh, it has been uh, given out. Jason Doyle gets the victory. Derek Sled in second. Klaus Viss in third. Carl Newman, no points for him. And could that be a telling moment in this grand final second leg? Wow. Things are heating up. Well, we move on to heat number 11. We've had a moment to draw our breath. <laughs> we're getting 
one just for a moment here. Heat number 11, Josh Gatronic comes out off gate number one. Played five from his first two rides, Craig Cook. He comes out off gate number two and John Campbell, he has got to the black and white helmet out for Craig. Off of uh, gate number two, gate number three, that sees uh, Charles Wright. And from the outside, Max Frick, who's had an up, up and down meeting so far as the young Aussie. He really was absolutely brilliant here back in June. Weather conditions somewhat different then when the sky cameras rolled into town. But uh, I think this is certainly more important than that meeting, of course, that this uh, meeting, the next five races, will decide the... Uh, 2013 Premier League champions will it be Somerset will it be Edinburgh the Casey's Rebels but can they swap Craig Cook's tactical ride in this one heat number 11 gets underway into that first Ben Cook he's made a pretty good start for Tronic well his front wheel went up on the grass but it is Craig Cook who leads the way from Josh in second place third spot it is Charles Wright Max Frick is at the back at the moment it stands it's a 6-3 for Edinburgh and uh, this would uh, reduce the gap to uh, just uh, seven points on the night and five points on aggregate as uh, Craig Cook he leads the way say that uh, first ride last where he pulled off before the end of the race he certainly has put that behind him he won his last ride and he looks like he's going to take another victory here good to go oh, he's only a couple of bike lengths behind as you can see as uh, Charles Wright well he's holding on to third place ahead of Max Frick two races going on in heat number 11 as uh, Josh, well he's, he can't get too wide, there's not too much grip out there, although we did see Sneddon find a way past Newman, of course, in the last race. One last attempt here by the Australian, but it's going to be the Englishman who gets a big six points. He wins heat number 11, second place goes to Gretronic, third place to Charles Wright, so at least the Somerset riders fill in the minor places. It's six points to Edinburgh, three to Somerset, 38 points to 31 on the night and 81 points to 76 on aggregate still plenty to race for four races remaining we'll be seeing that rider out in two more heats no doubt Craig Cook two wins in a row for him heat number 12 all these races hugely hugely important we got Nick Morris coming out off gate number one. He won his last ride. Derek Sneddon comes out off gate number two. He's picked up his form after a couple of last places to start with. Gate number three, that sees Oliver Greenwood. He scored paid two so far. And from the outside, we have got Klaus Vissing, who has scored paid six from his first three rides. Of course, he had that coming together with Cole Newman in his last outing. But he got the verdict, heat number 12 gets underway and into that first bed where Morris has made a pretty good start but so has Vissin. Here comes Klaus around the outside to lead the way from Morris in second. Greenwood is doing well to hold off Sneddon in third place in this one is young Oliver as they come around and complete the opening lap then. It is Klaus Vissin who leads the way from Nick Morris in second place. Oliver Greenwood doing a great job back in third to keep Derek Sneddon behind him. Sneddon incidentally coming in for Liam Carr in this one as the riders come round to complete lap number two. It is still Vissin who leads away from Morris. Greenwood in third, Sneddon at the back. The, no one knows where to, who to put, keep their eyes on. Here comes Sneddon on the inside. Meanwhile out in front it is Vissin that still leads away from Morris with Greenwood still holding off Sneddon as they start the final lap then. A shared heat at the moment and this would certainly suit at Somerset more than it would Edinburgh. Here comes Derek on the inside. It is Klaus Vissing though who looks like he's going to take the victory from Nick Morris in second with young Oliver Greenwood. That is a brilliant third place for him holding off Derek Sneddon who finishes at the back. Well, the Somerset Cases Rebels, the whole team are pulling their weight here tonight. They're just about to keeping their noses in front 41 points to 34 on the night 84 points to 79 on aggregate three races to, away from becoming the Premier League champions of 2013 Vissing gets his first win so we move on to heat number 13 and we've just had a brief rain shower we was going to have an interval after heat number 12 but that has been curtailed 
because uh, the rain returning, so we're going straight through with the meeting. Like Graham Reeve has done a great job to get this meeting run at such a great pace. We're just uh, three races away from having a conclusion to the Premier League season. Heat number 13, another big, big race. Craig Cook comes out off gate number one. Gate number two sees Jason Dool, the top two riders in the Premier League this year do battle in the heat 13 off gate number three it is Theo Piper from the outside Josh Grachonic who won the Premier League pairs with Jason here in a, on a superb evening in, on the last day of May in high summer this of course now we're into autumn as the riders well, the rain is still coming down Carl Newman, Steve Bishop, of course, who's done such a great job helping out here. Not officially a team manager these days, but does help out on occasions. We've got Norrie Allen here looking on as well. Plenty of celebrities and first Speedway personalities have made the journey down here to watch the action. Heat 13, Somerset, we could almost wrap the Premier League title up here with a 5 1, but that's it. Going to be very hard with Craig Cook in action. Heat number 13 is Cookie who's made the start from the inside. He leads the way. Jason Dawes is in second place, but Cook has clamped him down. Here comes Grachonic around the outside. Theo Piper tailed off at the back, but it is Craig Cook who leads the way from Josh Grachonic making a move around the outside. What a move by the Australian to come through in the first place. Cook was not expecting that. The rain's still falling down here on the Oak Tree Arena as Josh Gretronic leads the way from Craig Cook in second, Jason Doyle in third, Theo Piper is at the back of the 4-2 for Somerset and this would put them in touching distance of the Premier League title. That was an incredible ride by, Jason, by Josh Gretronic to come around the outside of Craig Cook. Very, very few riders are able to find a way past Cook once he hits the front but Josh Gretronic has been able to do it. A superb piece of overtaking skill by him as he's going to come round and take the victory in heat number 13. That is a marvellous win for him. And could that be a title winning ride from Josh Grachonic? It looked like a shared heat, but then here comes Josh around the outside. A brilliant move by him to take the victory. The rain pouring down here, but that doesn't mean anything to the fans or the riders for that matter as uh, it's a 4-2 for the home side 45 points to 36 81, 88 81 on Angbert what a win for the Aussie As you can see, Jason Doyle coming back in there after that 4-2 heat advantage in heat number 13. Charles Wright, Ney going out, Nick Morris there, and Carl Newman's cheer him on. There's seven points ahead going into heat number 14. Two points is all they need from this race to be crowned Premier League champions of 2013. What's going to happen? Oh, it's nail biting. So we move on to heat number 14. It's getting very, very tense indeed. Now the rain continuing to fall, but the riders, do, well, it uh, really is a full credit to them for coming out. They've no moaning at all. They're just getting on with this meeting. They want to see it decided over 15 races, and I'm sure it will be. Heat number 14, the riders out on track. We've got Charles Wright coming out off gate number one. Klaus Vissin is off gate number two. He won his last ride. Alex Davis comes out off gate number three. Derek Sneddon comes out off at gate number four. Heat number 14. The Casey's Rebels at three points here would win it for them. Can they get three points? That would give them an unassailable seven point lead going into the final race. Heat number 14 is underway. And it is Sneddon from the outside who's made a start. And Klaus Vissin is with him as well. Charles Wright is in third. Alex Davis is at the back. Bissing comes through to take the lead and uh, this is not looking good for Somerset. This would reduce the gap to uh, just uh, three points on the night. Edinburgh, of course, they need two five ones to deny Somerset once again by just one point. Will it happen two years in a row as Klaus Bissing, well, he leads the way from in second place. It is uh, Derek Sneddon, third spot. It is Charles Wright. Alex Davis is at the back. Two laps down, two to go. Davis coming around the outside of Charles right now. He looks like he's got a bit more speed than Charles. He's moved through in the third place and now he's challenging Sneddon. Can he possibly find a way past? He's got a lap in which to do so. Here comes 
and Alex Davis around the outside. A brilliant move by young Alex to get through in the second place. And they should almost win the title for Somerset. We're losing our voice here. As Klaus Vissin, he takes the victory. Second place goes to Alex Davis. What a ride by Alex. He came from last to second in just over a lap. And he's got through in a, uh, past Derek Sneddon. And that means that Somerset, well, they just need a point in the final race to be crowned the 2013 Premier League champions. 47-40 on the night, 90-85 on Aggart. What a ride by Alex Davis, straight back in the pitch to see the lads. That was superb. Alex, just a really quick word. What a ride in that race. Can you talk us through it? Yeah, it was a bit of a struggle off the start. It was real greasy and uh, there's not much I could really do, but uh, obviously I didn't make it. Um, and then uh, I just... Charles was cruising around the line and I, I didn't know what to do. I just had to try something big and lucky there was a little bit of dirt there and I could go, get past him, but... It was good, happy with that. Well, we're used to seeing you just trying stuff and having a go. And heat number nine as well was another fantastic ride. You wasn't going to settle for that third place. You wanted that second in heat nine. And again, we haven't seen a lot of passing in tonight's meeting, but two fantastic passes have come from you. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not been an easy meeting, obviously. It's the final of the Premier League. So, um, yeah, it's been hard, but uh, I've just got to keep plugging away and uh, just do what I can do. We've got, to, got, to make, got to make all the points that we can get. And there's one point that's all you need in heat number 50, so you just need to, someone needs to finish for the Rebels. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be in it? Fingers crossed. No, no, no. Yeah. fingers crossed. Fingers okay. crossed. Good luck then. <gasps> Gary, really quickly, who are you putting in heat 15? Jason Dorn, Josh Kozonic. Jason and Josh, and just really quickly, Debbie, Debbie you know you want to speak to us. How happy are you right now? Oh, very happy, but we still, watch your backs. We still, still, need, we still need one, we still need need one point. point, and I'm not getting excited just yet. We haven't done complacency all season, and we're not going to start now waiting for one point, but hey, everything crossed. I think we're going to see a very, down. very happy Debbie in a minute, though. I think you probably will, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. If this goes wrong now, I give up. It won't, it won't. We're well, very tense down in the pits, and it's very, very tense out on track now. This is the final race of the Premier League season. Who will be crowned champions? It all comes down to this one race. Jason Dahl and Josh Krachonik, well, surely they can get a point between them. They're out against uh, Craig Cook and Klaus Vissin. All the uh, Somerset uh, riders, management, commit and uh, mechanics are out on track. There's Di Phillips as well, who runs uh, the SREF, of course. Uh, will do a great job for the uh, Somerset riders. All the money goes back at to the riders to uh, help them out with their equipment. It's pouring down here at the Oak Tree Arena. I don't think anyone really notices, to be quite honest. All eyes are on the four riders who are out on track to uh, see who is going to be crowned the Premier League champions. It really has been very, very tense. Uh, full credit to Edinburgh. You really must uh, rate them very highly indeed. Coming here without Joseph Tobacco having to operate rider replacement. They have scored six points from the RR rides. Joseph may have scored one or two more, we'll never know, of course, so we do wish him well in his recovery as uh, the riders are settling down at the start. That's what it's all about. Who will be lifting that aloft uh, in uh, the next uh, few minutes? Will it be Derek Sneddon? Will it be Jason Doll? Eight fifteen's underway. Craig Cook has made a good start. Here comes Klaus Vissin around the outside of Jason Doll, but Doll holds him out. Grachonic is at the back, but that does not matter as long as uh, Jason Doyle can stay in a scoring position as they come in and complete the open lap then. And it's Craig Cook that leads the way from Jason Doyle in second place. And well, perhaps it's only apt that Jason Doyle has been such an instrumental rider for Somerset over the last few years. It's him that scores the points that uh, win Somerset the Premier League title. Will they do it as the... Uh, Everyone's looking on from the centre green. Couple of laps to go. Doyle holding on to that second place. The rain is pouring down here. It doesn't matter one iota. Craig Cook leads the way. That doesn't matter either because Jason Doyle is in a scoring position and his points will do it here for Somerset. They're on the final lap of the Premier League season for 2013. Craig Cook is going to take the victory. But Jason Doyle is going to come round and get the two points that win wins the Premier League title for Somerset. He's raised his arm in a loft. Well done to him. Well done to Somerset. They've done it. After the heartbreak of last year, they have turned it into triumph in 2013. They are the 2013 Premier League Championship, the champions of Somerset. Casey's Rebels, Bill Hancock out there. I think his wife is out there as well. All hugs and kisses. And well, absolutely brilliant scenes here. 
on the centre green at the OTA as Jason Doyle has got the two points that were required. Craig Cook wins the final race. Doyle gets the points that are needed. Klaus Viss in third. Josh Gretronica at the back. 49-44 on the night. 92-89 on aggregate. Brilliant scenes here on the centre green. Very many congratulations to Somerset. To commiserations to Edinburgh. It takes two teams to make a great final. And that certainly was that. And Laura's oh. down with Debbie. Also, I just want to go well, to boys, please. Oh, oh. <laughs> Well, Debbie's gone. We're going to go over to join in with all the celebrations. You can see Somerset Premier League champions 2013. Fantastic meeting for them to come out on top. Debbie, so happy with her boys. We've got another set of bumps going on over here as well. <laughs> From here, <laughs> as you can see, everyone's so happy. How do you feel? Hey. How are you feeling? <laughs> oh, over the moon! I can't believe it. Yeah. All the work's gone in this year, and we've just done it. It was fantastic. Did you expect it towards the end? Just I knew was... gradually and gradually further ahead. Yeah, I knew they, they were tight. They were a good side, Edinburgh, and you know they can always come back like they did with that five-one. And we just had to keep plugging away, and we did it. And it was a great performance. Even great. with this weather as well, yeah, still yeah, managed great. to come out on top. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Well done. Go Thank celebrate. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> So we're going to have a, try and grab a quick word with Bill now. We're going through everyone. How are you feeling? Everyone's so happy. Shocked. <laughs> Shocked? Really? No, no. But they, the boys have been absolutely brilliant for us all season. And it's uh, well, icing on the cake tonight. Long time coming, but absolutely fantastic. Old age is catching up and the heart's ticking. Well, I can tell it. It's not just the team that deserve it, though. You, Debbie, everyone behind the scene as well. Been working oh, so hard to get there. everybody that keeps this club ticking, right from the sponsors, right the way down through to the people that come here voluntary for us. Without them, it wouldn't tick. So we appreciate every each and every one of them. And with this weather tonight, we're absolutely very lucky to get the meeting on anyhow. But yes, over the moon, the whole family is. It's been a long time coming, but... Well worth Finally away. got there. Got there. Go and stand up right now. Yeah, we will <laughs> do. Thank you very later. much. Thank you. Thank you. So we're just going to go and listen to Josh now. A bit riding at the start, but I'm sure he's loving it now. Heat number 13, past, uh, past uh, Craig Cook. That was not a bad effort. <laughs> yeah, that was right before it started raining and made the outside a bit uh, bit wet, a bit too wet. But, you know, that was awesome. I, I sort of lined him up and I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. And my bike just kept pulling. So, yeah, I'll take that one. Another dozen heats, the track would have come really back to you, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. If it didn't rain that last bit, I think the track would have been mint for the last race. But, you know, we got a 4-2 in the last one, and that's all that matter. We only needed a finisher, and, yeah, we're cheering. Absolutely. Celebrate with the rest of the lads. Catch you in the clubhouse afterwards. Josh Grishonic, folks. As you can hear, the fans absolutely ecstatic behind us. So now we're going to hear from Jason Doyle. As you can hear, the crowd... Um, <laughs> heat number 15, it was a tense affair, we knew we only needed to finish the race, but uh, you can not, not account for anything in Speedway, can you? No, definitely not, uh, just showed when we when Newcastle got a 5-0 uh, uh, we got a 5 nil against uh, Newcastle to, ma to win the league for the Knockout Cup, and the track was uh, a little bit wet, like everyone can see, and I was just glad we can get it over and everyone done with. You're not the lover of greater wet tracks, we know that, but a uh, wise decision to carry on tonight, yeah? Yeah, it's, I don't think it's a wise decision, I think it was the only decision what we had to do, and uh, it just showed, I'm glad it went this way. Yeah, absolutely. And is this your last meeting of the season? It's, that's it, it's party time now. Woo! And guess what, you're in one piece. Yes, that's the main thing. Uh, three years in a row I've been uh, going home with contra uh, contraption, with breaking my neck last year, and now I can go, finally go onto the plane with uh, no injuries. Well done. Give a big shout for Doyle, folks. Yeah. He's too busy having an interview with uh, BBC to be able to get in on the picture, but I'm sure she'll get in sometime. <laughs> Debbie finally able to hold on to that cup. So close last year, but just didn't quite get there. And now Jason Doyle being handed the cup, the Premier League champions of 2013. Somerset Rebels getting ready to celebrate in style. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our cue from to move backwards. <laughs> As you can see, the celebrations in full, full flow. Steve Bishop 
absolutely covered. They're chasing Debbie. And I think it was Josh that just about got Debbie with the champagne. Fantastic scenes here at the Oak Tree. And they Carl Newman also in the background trying to get Gary May. Jason Doll just happy to have the Premier League Cup in his grasp. <laughs> you can see Debbie there. Josh just falling up on the stand as well. <laughs> just missed that, I think. <laughs> We're all a bit tipsy from the smell, according to Josh. <laughs> oh, Mummy Hancock just too busy drinking the champagne to be able to get involved <laughs> with the festivities on the stand. <laughs> trying to get all the rides in and we've got some fireworks going off as well behind the Somerset Rebels crowned Premier League Champions 2013 Woo! <laughs>